Um, didn't they rush this game to try and bring it out earlier on? And now those who've rushed to get the game on PS4 and Xbox One are pretty much playing something that is near a brick. I told you, just wait. And we'll talk about those reviews as well. Um, Cyberpunk 2077, as I say, Cyberpunk 2077. You see, I'm a, I love, um, RPGs. I'm a huge fan of RPGs. I love me some RPGs, man. So, um, this obviously, you know, was a, is a game that I had my eyes on. The only thing that is stopping me from being fully excited is that I need my RPG to be third, third person. What's the point in customizing your player if you can't go third person? So unless I'm wrong for what I've heard, it's a, it's a first person game. So for me, like a first person RPG, because the world is just so cool and I love the whole sci-fi world, huge fan of Blade Runner. I'm like, okay, maybe it'd be fun, but still, uh, there has to be a third person option. But I have a PS4 and an Xbox One. I'm not getting a PS5 or a Series X until a super top tier game comes out on those systems. All those piece of crap losers called Brickstar bring out GTA 6. You absolute losers. So, where we are. Um, so, my thing here is this. Is, um, so, the game comes out and I now look on Twitter and apparently this game runs like a brick on PS4 and Xbox One and they're now frame rate issues, difference bugs and and so forth. And guys have the data say, oh, no, no, no. This game isn't for the PS4, Xbox One. It's for the Series X and the PS5. What? This game was always advertised for, for the PS4. And then, oh, but, you, but, but it cannot be maximized and upgraded for the PS4. It will look better on the PS5, but it was made specifically for the PS4 and for the Xbox One. It's been, what, five, six, seven years in, in development? So my thing is... All these people rushing over this game. Chill. Just chill. Wait. Don't pre-order it. Because as soon as they said they're actually pushing up the release date, don't pre-order. Wait and listen to reviews. Listen to what other people have done. Because now, from what, I, from what I'm hearing, okay, I'm going to wait for a patch. I'm not. I'm going to spend, what, 60 Cause I think this thing like sixty pounds. Look, look, this place sixty pounds on this game to buy something that looks like like, like trash and plays like trash and has bugs. Nah, I mean, <laughs> nah, chill, relax. And I am buying a PS Five or a Series X to play this game. So that's not happening. That's not happening. So my thing about Cyberpunk is just, just chill, relax. You know, and wait until you get a proper version. So I mean. <laughs> Even for those who've already bought it, I think look, it's fine because they say that, you know, when they release a patch, you just download it and then um, it will. It has to obviously be free. So once that thing comes out like like next year, yeah, you, it, it will definitely iron out all the issues. But I mean, it would be more ideal if you bought a game that was actually um, fully operational. So yeah, my thing is, that, yeah, I'm, I'm not touching this game until two things. I still need to read more reviews and we'll get to that. And until they um, iron out all the issues, let's talk about reviews. <laughs> People are weird. People are weird. Now, I get it. You love this game. You've been waiting for this game for, for, for ages and you need this game to succeed. You need it to be successful. But what I find weird about people is if others aren't as excited as you or they don't co-sign what you think, you then attack them. A reviewer is a reviewer. And sometimes, not every reviewer is going to share the same consensus to any piece of art. Someone will play game like, eh, nah, it's not for me, it's not, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not very good. You know, like, what's it called? The, the very first Assassin's Creed game, I stopped, I stopped playing after 50 minutes. Not because the game was bad in sense or technically. Technically, the game was amazing. But the missions were boring and, and trash and repetitive, so I stopped playing. And for me, if I was reviewing Assassin's Creed, I'll give it high max for um, gameplay and for graphics. 
but I would give it like pretty much zero max in terms of missions and the image in the imagination and creativity of missions and things that you have to do and the storyline. Story was piece was was crap. And I think from what the GameSpot reviewer said is that eh, story seems a little bit cheesy and not so so great. Why do you have an issue with that? That is the reviewer's opinion. People say, oh, they gave this thing, they gave, look, look at what this, 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 this reviewer gave the um, score for this game. So therefore, because they gave a high score for this bad game, why should we believe this? They've given this review. At the end of the day, you buy the game and you can now choose whether you like the game or not. Simple as that. Why does your happiness hinge on what someone thinks about something that you're waiting to guess or waiting to play or waiting or, 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 or waiting to ex ex experience it makes no sense you know and you see i angry joe is the only guy i trust because he's the only guy that i say hasn't been bought <laughs> every other video game reviewer i think has been compromised i stopped i i i, I stopped ign years ago ign are the most corrupt video game reviewer that that's you you, you can think of because IGN are like we need those freebies you give us those freebies we're giving you a nine or, or or above they're the most brainless reviewers ever before like every basically every single major release triple a release by like a major developer IGN gives them nine or or, or above because IGN needs to keep these relationships see GameSpot, i think as a point there was like a bit of a controversy where they go bought but before then, GameSpot were always the guys I went to because GameSpot, for me, back then, they were always very harsh markers. So I think they've only given like two or three games, 10, 10, 10 out of 10. Like in their entire history, only three games have got like 8 or 10. But to get like a 9 or, or even an 8 from GameSpot is tough. To get a 9 is very hard. Very few games even get a 9. 10 is almost impossible. So once you have that, that means you're like, wow. If they give this an 8, it must mean something. If they give this a 9, it must mean something. Because if it's hard to get high marks, that means you really have to be of a very high standard to get those marks. A 9 from IGN means nothing. If you, a 9 from IGN means absolutely nothing. Because IGN, these guys are morons. They are bots. <laughs> they are bots. IGN gives everything a 9. Look at any major release. And I'm sure a lot of the games that IGN gave Nana played those games and these games have been crap. But I'm like, ah, oh, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's what's it called? It's a EA game. It's what's it called? Konami. It's Take Two. It's Rockstar. It's it's a big developer. All right. It's Square Enix. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously, they'll give them a few freebies. First thing, they'll, they'll invite them for. That's what you're like, okay, can we play your, your, your video game first? Can we have first dips on, on this game? Can we have a, 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 a goodies bag? Cool. We'll now reward you with this. And obviously, people like the brainless morons that they are will look at an IGN script like, yeah, IGN, yeah. When you just do that at all. They've given them a nine because they get freebies. It's as simple as that. So for this cyberpunk thing, I'm waiting for Angry Joe's review. Because that is a guy who, because sometimes I disagree with him, but more times than not, he's on the money and Angry Joe is not, he's not afraid to be like, hmm. This game is trash. So he's real. He is real because there are games where top tier games where he's like, nah, this game's crap. So I'm being very interested to see what he thinks about this game. Because again, what's it called? I was really into that Watch Dogs Legions. Okay, this seems interesting. This seems interesting. I know it's a business, seems interesting. I watched their re review, trashed the game, said, game's crap. I was like, boom, thank you. You saved me. You save me. So it is always very, very important to go to reviewers who you know that they're in the bot and will give you that real and have fully tested the game, all the nooks and crannies and so forth. So for me, yeah, man, I'll, I'll wait for that. But yeah, you see, my thing with Cyberpunk is I'm, I'm, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait, you know, because I still have a lot of video games to, to play in a, in, a, in a big backlog. But I think the thing about it is that where I stand is the world looks amazing. The actual world and what it looks like and how immersive it is, it does look amazing. But I'm just worried about the whole first person nature. And I don't really like that, that there's no third, third person. And also, there's just a few characters that are, And I just want to know how good the, the story is with regards to, to mission, storyline, and how free you can be within the world. That is what I'm really looking forward to. And I know, look, for a fact, this ain't sniffing Mass Effect. 
<laughs> the, 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 the sniff in your boy Mass Effect. Don't sniff oh, Mass Effect one on two. Don't sniff in the, 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 those ones, man. But um, guys, just wait and chill. That's it. Just wait and chill, and that's the best way to roll, man. Peace out. Stay true. One.